Hi again, this is Dr. Joshua Durham with Family Medicine. Today we're going to discuss cholesterol and kind of maybe a different look at cholesterol than the traditional views. The reason is I think that the majority of us don't really even understand what LDL cholesterol is and so I really want to kind of dive in deep and talk about the job and the function of LDL. So first things first, LDL is a protein structure, okay? And this is the one they deem the bad guy, okay? So I liken it to a structure kind of like a bus, right? And inside this bus we have a ton of things, okay? And I'm just going to briefly go over some of the major ones. We have the omega-6 and omega-3 fats. Okay, which, if you've seen my other lectures, are these polyunsaturated fats. Okay, And remember, the more unsaturated a fat is, the more unstable it is, and it's more likely to oxidize or go rotten or rancid. Then you've got saturated fat. You've got cholesterol. Okay, Now, cholesterol is vital for our bodies. We need it for our cell structures. We need it for our hormones. Pretty much all of your hormones come from cholesterol. We need it for our brains to function and to form the myelin sheaths. Uh, in fact, your brain, if I remember right, uses about 25% of your cholesterol. And what's interesting is, is if you don't eat cholesterol, your body will just make it. Your cells have the ability to make this because it is vital to our survival. Um, and that's why you've heard so much over the years of don't eat eggs, do eat eggs, don't eat butter, oh, butter's okay. It's because eating cholesterol will either, will make it self-regulate itself, basically. Um, and then we've got fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, K, and E. Um, We've got coenzyme Q10. Now, coenzyme Q10 is an antioxidant, and it also is inside your mitochondria, which is the powerhouse of the cell to help make ATP. So we need this to be delivered to our cells in order to help them function. And then it's got antioxidants. All right? Antioxidants fight cancer, and they fight infection, and they fight something called oxidative stress. Okay? So you can see that LDL looks to be important. It's got a job and it's got a function. I don't think it's just there to, to kill us. Um, and so what happened? Why did we demonize this, this protein uh, bus-like structure? Well, what happened was in about the 1960s, they did a biopsy of a plaque and they found LDL in it. And so they said immediately, LDL causes heart disease. We need to lower it at all cost, and that's when you kind of got the don't eat butter, eat margarine, um, and uh, the, the entire country kind of shifted what they were doing. But if you fast forward to today, there's been a lot more research and there's a lot more knowledge known about really what's going on. Um, the first thing to understand is, is there's a receptor on here, and when you eat sugar, or you have chronically high blood sugars, it's going to bind to that receptor and make it sticky and damage it, okay? It's called glycosylation. Okay? The second thing, in about the 1980s, they did some studies and they said, all right, we're going to prove that LDL causes heart disease. And so what they did is they took LDL and they put it in a Petri dish with some macrophages, which are these white blood cells, kind of look like Pac-Mans, part of your immune system. They said, we're going to put these together and we're going to watch it cause heart disease and watch it activate those macrophages. But when they did that, nothing happened. So they kept going back and going back and trying to get it to do this. And what they discovered was that it's a form of LDL called oxidized LDL, which is actually the problem. And once they were able to get that LDL to oxidize, boom, then the macrophage started doing its thing and we started getting plaque formation. So if you look at those papers and what they were doing, 
Well, what they did was they went and they added omega-6 and then they had it oxidize. And that omega-6 oxidized and caused the formation of oxidized LDL. Okay? So instead of telling people we need to get our omega-6 level down, they came out with a drug called the statin. Okay? And the statin will lower your LDL. And it'll make your labs look good. However, if you still eat sugar, and you still have an abnormal omega-6 to 3 ratio, which if you've seen my previous lectures, in nature we're supposed to have a ratio of about 2 to 1, but the average American is sitting at 20 to 1, then you're still going to have oxidized LDL. And so you get about, for primary prevention, with absolute numbers, you get about a 1 to 2 percent absolute risk reduction by taking a statin. But you're changing your cell structures, you're changing your hormones, you're potentially messing with the brain function, you're potentially messing with your antioxidant system, your energy production, causing vitamin deficiencies, and potentially messing up your immune system and its ability to fight off these invaders. So I look at this a little bit differently, okay? If you go back and you look at what's causing the oxidation of LDL, that is the lipid peroxidation molecules of omega-6. So if you can think about this, every cell in your endothelium is lined with cell membranes, okay? And if you take one of those cells and you look at it, Let's say these are like the fatty lipids in the membrane. I'm just really simplifying this. When you're born, you have an occasional omega-6 and omega-3, but you mostly have saturated and monounsaturated fats, right? And so this would actually be a 1 to 1 ratio of omega-6 to 3. But when you change that to 20 to 1, then all of a sudden you're unsaturating your cells, okay? And these unsaturated cells when they meet a free radical, we'll start to oxidize. So picture this, in all these cells, okay, you've got this abnormal amount of omega-6, and it's causing all this oxidative stress, okay, or inflammation. LDL's job is to come in, try to soak that up with its antioxidants, try to repair these, replace the fatty membranes, the lipids in them, and what happens is it gets overwhelmed, it gets oxidized, and it goes down. So I kind of look at this like, okay, this is kind of like the Titanic, right? The Titanic, and here's all the little icebergs, which is the ice, the uh, oxidative stress, right? So saying that LDL causes heart disease is like saying that Titanic sank itself. I just don't agree with that. I think the oxidative stress and the icebergs are what causes heart disease and that LDL is taking the blame. So my goal in my practice is to get this abnormal omega-6 to 3 ratio back to a normal one so that your LDL is healthy. I want to get the sugar out of your diet, get your blood sugars to normal so that your LDL receptors are healthy and your LDL can do its job rather than give you a medication with potential side effects. So thanks for watching. Uh, that's my thoughts on LDL and cholesterol.